Hi. Um, so I'm from Circle Economy. I thought it was interesting to maybe give you a brief introduction about our organization before launching into how we use urban metabolism related topics in our work. So we're a social enterprise and our uh, mission is to basically scale circularity around the world and we do this by delivering practical scalable solutions to cities and businesses. Um, we do a variety of different types of work. So we do novel research for circularity. We help create strategies for businesses and cities. We offer a lot of workshops and do capacity building in these um, in, in businesses and cities as well. And then we also act as an ecosystem builder or network organization to bring people together or organizations together. And internally, we organize into sector programs and enabling programs. So we have a deep kind of focus area into textiles, food and built environment, but then also look at enabling programs which are more cross-cutting like jobs and skills or finance and business models and also design and brands. And we've been doing this work for about six years, mostly in Europe, but now more recently across the world as well, we're getting more requests. And in the last few years, we have embarked on a mission to go digital in order to meet the demands of all of these requests around the world. We want to enable our beneficiaries to help themselves and to use our tools and processes and frameworks and so on to enact circularity in their region. So I work in the digital team um, and I work across the organization to develop the system internally to help digitalize our processes and also to build the community externally to distribute and disseminate those tools. So our cities program, um, a few years started, I think, six years ago, but in the last three years, we've been working with about 15 cities, and we work with them in a process called the city scan. And that process usually takes about a year. It's run with a series of workshops in the city where we bring together the relevant stakeholders, and we work together to find the most relevant opportunity for circularity in that city. And we do this using, as much as possible, the data that's available in that city. So we work with relevant companies and the municipality to try create a map of the materials in the city and then work together with policymakers or relevant organizations to figure out what the key topic areas are and then develop those strategies. And recently we've been really been hounded with requests from all over the world in Asia and Africa and, and both the Americas. So we've been looking to create this process into d something digital. So this is our, our vision is to try and create what we've been wanting to absorb it into our digital system, which we call Circle Lab. And we would like to create this um, an environment then for cities. So can we help cities cre um, find their circular opportunities and what can we do? So this is just to frame how Circle Lab for cities fits within a, br a broader picture. We develop tools for cities and businesses in different topics and in different regions, but it all lives together in one kind of bigger digital ecosystem. So, so today we'll be talking about this cities component and where the vision for the cities component is to provide urban change makers with suites of tools that are based on data as much as possible, insights from the community and help them to create circular strategies in their region and actually act out a strategy. So the aim is to create pilot projects, to create policies, programs, etc. cetera. Okay. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about our approach to how we've been building this and what stage we're at now and what we see in the near future. So the first thing when building digital products is to have a look at the user. So who's the person who's actually gonna be logging on and looking at the tool? And we, had a, we broke down a little bit what our universe of users are. And we see that um, within a city or in a big organization, there's normally some kind of key decision maker. And we, instead of dealing directly with the key decision maker as our user, we actually look at the people who are speaking to those key decision makers. So we call them sustainability consultants, either acting within the municipality or externally to the municipality. And they usually are creating reports or guidance for those key decision makers. And they work alongside partner research institutions and also with local businesses to try and understand and get the map of what they'll be reporting or communicating and deliver it to that key decision maker. So we're focusing on this Jennifer and Louis type of persona. And we spoke to a lot of Jennifers and Louis 
and we came down to what their problem is, which is what can I do to implement circularity in my region? And they want to do this using evidence, they want to do this by bringing people along and bringing organizations along, and also aligning to what the political priorities are in the region as well. So in order to answer that question, the first thing that we had to do was turn our scan process, which I mentioned earlier, into something digital and structured. So can we guide them along a series of steps that will allow them to do the work that we have previously done and give guidance on that throughout the way? And then in order to do that, we have broken down what the primary modules are that would support that process. So the blue ones are the ones we're focusing on currently which is a digital MFA, digital material flow analysis. What can we display about the materials in the region? And a knowledge hub for cities, which is what are the cases in your own region or in similar regions or in relevant other regions and policies in those regions that are, re are related to the circularity in your city. And in the future, we hope to develop other performance gauges as well. So what's going on with the sectors? What's the, uh, maybe the circular jobs or the circular gap in the region as well? And this should help to create an evidence-based picture of the city, which will in turn support guiding the users through the scan. Underneath those, we need to create an opportunity scoring framework, which helps us to understand which opportunities are best placed for that region. And then underpinning it all is a big community platform. So if we link it back to this, um, the urban metabolism topic, we center our decisions and our opportunity framework around what data is available. So if we can find information about materials in the city, we'll use that to guide what the opportunity should be. And then the better the information about the urban metabolism is, the better interventions we can design. Okay, so let's have a look at what the content is that flows in here. So with the materials, all right, so I think we all know that how very scarce the material flow data is and how very unstructured it is or how sparse, yeah, how sparse it can be. So what we've done for now, we're testing this. Well, we've done this in Europe and we're doing it. We'll continue to roll it out for other countries around the world. But um, we're having a look at what's, what we've taken as data that's available on Eurostat to combine it into national, um, national sectoral material flows. So this data is already available if you look at there's already some country level material data, some product information, um, what materials go into it, we, which product, and then what the levels of consumption are of, about those products within a country. So we can turn that into a kind of country level flow and then use maybe some um, geospatial analysis to scale it down to a city, to a NUTS3 region, and then locate cities within those NUTS3 regions. So this is our first pass to get an idea of can we get a high level comparison across different cities and different regions? And we can look at things like um, what's the, you know, what, even what's the usage of wood or consumption of wood within one region to another. And then we can focus our interventions about where the data is the most available and the most trusted. What we're working towards through this is creating city level IO tables. So we've got a, a kind of top-down version of getting to NUTS3 into cities, and now we're looking to activate local communities within those regions to start building bottom-up data to integrate those two sources. From a built environment perspective, we're building stock modeling maps at different levels of granularity and resolution, and then so that we can overlay what's available in the built environment in these cities as well. So typically our approach is to do a, a low granularity um, kind of model top down and then build it up with, with local partners bottom up. And a key component of all of this is what we call data alliances. So working with organizations who already hold uh, public data or maybe proprietary data to try and combine it in different ways. And we work with public organizations and private organizations to do this. Um, but the material data is only useful if we can link it to a series of case studies about circularity. So we work, uh, we work with our partners as well to gather all of these case studies and link them to the material flows. That's the crucial part, of course. So once a city has identified that maybe they would like to run an intervention regarding bio-based materials in construction, 
then they need to see what other relevant cities have done. So we build up the knowledge community to write and read those case studies. And we currently have about 10 contributing partners, contributing organizations, and we're working to try and streamline the process of uploading those cases and feeding the, and writing them and curating them. But these, um, and these are fed into our Circle Lab for Cities tool at appropriate moments. So if the user is looking at biomass in a region, then they'll get relevant case studies for that topic of interest. And then lastly, a quick um, overview of how we're looking at the scoring. So I mentioned that we're trying to identify what the opportunities are in the city. We have a framework already for opportunities, but now comes the tricky part of actually assigning priorities to those opportunities. So this is just an example of how it kind of works at a high level. Um, we're looking to say, so what's the, you know, what's the level of opportunity of installing, say, a biodigester, and then scale it, looking at that across two cities. And we combine two types of scores. One we call an expert score, which we develop with working groups and local partners and try and use local models and local feasibility frameworks. And another, an, an, another component is an elastic or al algorithmic score where we look at the actual content that's in the research. So what's in the body of research that's available about this topic generally and look at that in relation to the city. It's a little bit of like natural language analysis and trying to link it back to the opportunities in the city. We can chat about it afterwards if you're interesting. If you're interested, it's very, very cool. Okay, so now let's see. I wanted to give you a quick um, overview of the prototype itself. So at the moment, we've been testing it and with the users this year. We've developed a prototype with them this year. And we're looking to release a V1 uh, early next year in Q1. So what you'll see now is just the prototype that we've been testing recently. Um, so final design, not, not yet final designs. But just to give you an idea of what, you can, what they're looking at. So first thing, of course, is that they enter a city which they're interested in, and we hope to have full coverage in a, as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. And once they've selected a city, then they get what we'd call this opportunity radar. So around the radar, you can see what is our framework of circular opportunities that we've worked, we've developed over the last few years. And the opportunities that are the most relevant to the city at the moment, based on our scoring framework, the knowledge base, and the materials data, gravitate to the center, and the user is able to then explore the opportunities that are the most relevant to them, or at least to understand the range of opportunities that are possible in their city. They'll be able to read a little bit more about what that opportunity is, and then also to adjust the scoring factors. So they'll be able to see what is it that got them to that score, and then what, if they would like to change it up or down, they of course are able to do that. It's more guidance and uh, just to create some, try and create some order. Um, and then underneath that, they asked to say, would they like to focus actually on one sector or material? So first you get a kind of overview of the city based on top-down high-level data, but then you can deep dive into looking at a particular sector or combination of sectors or a particular material and combination of materials. So over here, we've loaded some publicly available data scaled to the city. And you can have a look at what is, um, what, what's actually flowing through that city, inputs and outputs. And you can drop down and look at some different aggregations, like embodied emissions, or uh, it, we're testing which fields are the most valuable to the user right now. Because even as Aristide said, there's a lot you can use. And we don't want to bombard the users. We want to just give them only the few things that they really need in their context to make their decisions. Um, so same, same principle with construction. They're able to deep dive into which sector. Oh, you can only see in the background here. But the sectors are also profiled into relevant, with relevant data points. So for example, which ones are, have the most jobs or sorted by emissions or sorted by gross value add. And you can see here as well that once they've selected some kind of area of interest, this is where the Knowledge Hub comes into play. So the case studies that are relevant to the, um, to the selection get, get listed in the relevant place in the tool. And then they're able to search for other relevant cities to find comparable case studies in cities that they think are comparable. Um, and lastly, underpinning this, or what we'll develop later, is 
a data platform to help support uploading data for the local partners as well. So currently we do this manually with them and we're working on a system to try and structure it and get them have an online environment where this can be uploaded and we'll have a kind of unified system with the data definitions. It's an ongoing, ongoing mission. I think maybe s many of you here are probably involved in similar projects. So that was my introduction into Circle Lab. Um, I thought it might be valuable to say what the kind of partners are that we're looking for in case any of you have been are interested in anything that we're talking about. So on the one hand, we're looking for knowledge partners about any of the topics related to circular, circular, circularity in cities. So either from the material data perspective, maybe the most likely, but even the knowledge base or the opportunity scoring framework with regards to particular opportunities. And then of course, um, building the actual technology and data system is a challenge, but also a very interesting challenge. And of, of course, community builders across all of these topics. Maybe we can work together to integrate our systems. So if you have any questions or comments or would like to get in touch, these are, well, please get in touch with one of us. Thank you.